General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. Many black veterans returned to the state after World War II, bitter over the legally sanctioned segregation and denial of the vote they were still experiencing at home, even after fighting for freedom and democracy. World War II forced America to reconsider American racial policy. Is our country like Nazi Germany? It's in terms of, of legal segregation and separating people on the basis of, of skin color, class, religion. Truman became the first civil rights president in this country because he indeed wanted to say that the United States is not the separate but equal doctrine remained deeply embedded in the social fabric of the segregated South. Until this time, the NAACP had been a relatively small urban-based unit in South Carolina. But in the post-war South, the NAACP evolved into a broad-based mass organization with diverse interests and aspirations. Most people discuss, analyze, know about the Brown decision, the Montgomery bus boycott, some of the direct action. The thing that happened during that early period for me was a young man by the name of Emmett Till. Now, Emmett Till is no more than, than uh, 13 years old. They beat him and shot him and threw him in the, in the, in the Pearl River in Mississippi. And then I see Emmett Till's head on the cover of Jet Magazine. It does not look like a child. It does not look like a human being. And so the question for many of us youngsters, and certainly many of those people who were engaged in the early stages of the Civil Rights Movement was, what has Emmett Till done to cause somebody to respond to him in this manner? The most notable legal assault on segregation began in South Carolina. In Clarendon County, an African-American farmer did not think his children should have to walk nine miles every day to attend a segregated public school, while white students received transportation. School principal and active NAACP member Joseph Delane agreed. When petitions to the school board failed, the NAACP's top lawyer and future Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall came to town. In Clarendon County, all they wanted was, was a, a bus to transport their students. The case that developed as Briggs v. Elliott became the first of four cases consolidated as Brown v. the Board of Education, the U.S. Supreme Court's 1954 landmark case that overturned the separate but equal doctrine. Historian C. Van Woodward wrote of the Brown decision. Something very much like a panic seized many parts of the South. A panic bred on insecurity and fear. Resistance hardened up and down the line, and in places it stiffened into bristling defiance. Do you think it's wrong for integration to take place here? Well, according to what uh, the scripture and God said about it, I think it, uh, it's wrong. You have a boy yourself who's attending high school. I just about as soon have taken him to the cemeteries to send him to school with colored. And you came around for many, many years. I graduated in 72. I went to Manning High School in 69. There wasn't anybody saying, oh, come over here. The things that the people still were doing at home, it was very racist. I mean, I was, it was a day school that was called all kinds of things. And it's great to see the transformation now. So that you ask the question, it's like, well, what was it like? But it was a lot of pain. And a lot the civil rights movement expanded across the South and exploded in violence in Alabama. Mississippi, and elsewhere. But South Carolina received little national attention. In 1963, Harvey Gantt was the first African American to be admitted to Clemson University. 
And I often used to ask myself, was it worth it? And, the, and, and, and now I, I clearly can answer that it was worth it because what it did was inspire a lot of people to think, yes, I can do. In Charleston, South Carolina, Septima Clark was among a group of black school teachers who lost their job for refusing to cancel their NAACP membership. She eventually moved to Tennessee and continued to teach. She believed that untrained people possessed the potential for leadership, and she displayed a knack for spotting that quality in individuals and helping them to develop it. Rosa Parks later credited her exposure to Clark as giving her the resolve not to surrender her seat on the bus to a white passenger. Mrs. Park's action that day led directly to the Montgomery bus boycott, from which evolved the civil rights leadership of a 26-year-old minister named Martin Luther King, Jr. The democratic, solid South that had emerged from the Compromise of 1877 was still intact by 1948, and civil rights became the central issue of that election year. In 1947, Harry Truman has to integrate the federal workplace. Um, in the 1948 campaign, uh, he actually made a pretty important civil rights speech, and civil rights became part of the Democratic Party platform. So there's a lot of anger about this. Not enough troops in the army to force the southern people to break down segregation and admit the Negro race into our theaters, into our spring pools, into our homes, and into our churches. Motivated politically, and also by what he saw as a challenge to Southern honor, Strom Thurmond, South Carolina's governor, responded to the civil rights initiatives of his party by reversing course politically and accepting the Dixiecrat nomination for president. Thurmond runs as president against uh, Harry Truman and against the Republican candidate. As the crowd cheered his acceptance speech, a group of students paraded with large Confederate battle flags. He carried four states, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and South Carolina. The Dixiecrat campaign aroused white emotions about race and broke the ties between the Deep South and the Democratic Party. As Thurmond himself said, the South is no longer in the bag. In 1963, Alabama's newly elected governor, George Wallace, set an example for many Southern traditionalists. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. In 1964, after voting against the Civil Rights Act, Strom Thurmond, who is now a U.S. Senator, called it the most unreasonable and unconstitutional legislation that has ever been considered by Congress. For 150 years, we talk about the dominance of the Democratic Party in South Carolina, and that being the white party, right, the white conservative party. The party of John C. Calhoun and of White Hampton, uh, and originally the Strong Thurmond. Uh, how is it uh, South Carolina uh, become a primarily uh, a Republican state? Thurmond switched his party affiliation and moved his state's rights Dixiecrat followers into the mainstream of the Republican Party. States' rights has always in American history been a philosophical statement that has been tied to race. This is kind of the beginning of the traditional loyalty uh, of, of white South Carolina and of the white South as a whole. Southern states realized the influence their region could have on national elections. The Southern strategy they developed to support primarily Republican candidates would impact elections well into the 21st century.